Hi, and welcome back. Today's video, I'm gonna talk to you about how to be more productive. We're gonna discuss a little bit, uh, some concepts from Stephen Covey back in the 90s, the late Stephen Covey back from the 1990s, wrote a book about time management that is still applicable today. When dealing with increasing, how to increase our productivity, the first thing you might wanna do is uh, create, or what I do actually, is I create a to-do list of all the things that I must get done, all the things that are really important for me to get done, and maybe all my pet projects and ideas and things like that. Then I take two highlighters, and I highlight maybe in red all the things that are really urgent need to get done immediately. And urgent items are things like maybe the house is on fire, so you need to put out the fire first before you start working. Or maybe you left the window open, it's rained all over the floor, and you need to clean that up and close the window before you start on that project. Or maybe the Wi-Fi has gone down in your house, and therefore you can't answer your boss, your clients, and you can't even start working on that website or whatever it might be that you need to do. So you need to fix the Wi-Fi first before you can start on that project. So these are things that are like important and they're urgent and they need to be addressed immediately. But the ideally we want to keep those types of tasks to a minimum because those tasks make us stay in reactive mode. And we want to avoid being in reactive mode. Reactive mode doesn't allow us to schedule our time and our productivity and when's the best time to do a project. Because we want to ideally schedule the best time when our energy is strongest to do that particular project. So the second thing would be is I would take the yellow marker and I would start marking all the things that are really important and that are gonna give me the greatest benefit. If I do XYZ project, I'm gonna get the greatest benefit long term. Could be medium term as well. So in that project, maybe something that needs one day, one week, one month, one year, three years, I don't know, it depends on what the project is. You know, if you're writing a book, it might be three years. If you're writing a blog article, it might be just two, three to four days. Anyway, so you identify what is that one task that I need to take care of today that's gonna to give me the greatest benefit. The, again, the, the task or that I can deal with today that's gonna to give me the greatest benefit. And schedule a block of time that you will not be interrupted so you can focus on that task. So what I would suggest doing is, for example, in the mornings, I am most creative for doing writing. And also, I'm quite creative for doing writing in the early evenings. Either time of the day is about the same for me. But I also train, when I go to the gym and things like that, I train best in the early morning. Problem is, if I train really hard in the morning, by the afternoon, I'm feeling a little bit exhausted or fatigued physically. So it makes more sense in my case, in a situation like this, that I do my writing in the morning and I do my training in the afternoon. If you kind of get my drift and what my suggestion is. So you need to figure out when is your energy peaks and apply those most important activities during that time. And things that are not so important, like maybe answering emails, to do that at maybe at another period of the day. And again, being in reactive mode and always answering emails all the time, that's just a waste of time. That's a bad idea. You want to control your time. You control your time. It's up to you and you have the freedom to do that. Or you can be a slave. It's your choice. And people say, no, but my boss, my this, my that, excuse. No, you control your time. Get a grasp on life. Control your time. Schedule your time when it's best for you to get things done. Now, number three is learning to identify what is not important, but urgent. So obviously these things, we don't even want to do them. And identifying things that are not important and not urgent. So that might be something that you enjoy doing, like leisure activity or something like that, but doesn't really give you any benefit or whatever. So you might want to schedule a time for doing some of these things. That's fine. Maybe going to the cinema might be an example of that. It's not important and it's not urgent. So, but you make a time for Saturday afternoon to do that or Sunday or, or something of that nature. So that's great. But it's really important that you get an idea of what it is. The main thing is what is important that I need to take care of today or what is important that I can do today that's gonna to give me the greatest benefit long, long term. The other thing is to keep in mind is sometimes to give us more freedom of time is we can learn to delegate certain activities. Now, how do we learn to delegate or how do we decide, how do we decide what is best to delegate? Well, there's a few criteria we can use. One is by getting a calculate, making a calculation of what is my time worth per hour. And you can do that based on what I make an annual, annually, and I divide it up by the amount of hours I work per week. I say, okay, this is what my time is worth per hour. And I contract somebody to take care of that task who can do that task better than me, quicker than me, and cheaper than me. So if my time is worth, let's say, 50 bucks an hour, I would wanna hire somebody for less than 50 bucks an hour that I would delegate that task and that they can do that task better than me and quicker than me and more efficiently than me. 
That is one criteria for delegation. The other thing to keep in mind in delegation, I see this happen a lot in organizations where somebody's working on a project or they have a task and they send them help. They send them somebody to help them with that task. But the person has no idea, the, help, the helper or the assistant, how to do the task. So the person has to teach the person how to do the task and it takes days or hours, many hours or days, to teach this person how to do that task. And sometimes, depending what the task is, if the task is a long-term task, no problem. But if it's a task that's only two, three days, it might not actually be worth it. And I know a lot of people, they say, yeah, my boss sent me an assistant to help me with the project, but it's no help to me because I have to teach, the person doesn't know how to do the task, I have to teach them how to do it, which takes my time, which puts me behind, <laughs> gets me behind schedule. So these are all kinds of things that we have to take into account when we're dealing with maybe delegating or getting help with different projects or be willing to make that commitment to train the person to do that task because I can use that person for that delegation over and over and over and over. Meaning, if it's a task I'm going to do just like one time, um, and it's going to take me a few hours, maybe it's not worth delegating. But if it's a task I'm doing on an ongoing basis, let's say like, I don't know, optimizing a website or editing a video or something like this, those kinds of things, maybe it's best for me to hire somebody to do that because I'll be doing that over and over and over and over again. But let's say I'm just going to do a one-off and do, um, I don't know, I'm going to write a two-paragraph article on something in LinkedIn, let's say, right? Well, it might not be worth for me to hire a writer to do that for me because we have to edit it and send it back and forth and back and forth and I have to explain to them what I want and all that kind of thing when I can just write it myself, edit it myself, and publish it. I, I hope that simplifies the, the, the idea when I'm talking about delegation. Now. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope the video has offered you some helpful tips. I know they work. I hope I've explained them clearly enough for you. If you have any questions or whatever, send us a message. I'll be more than happy to, to answer you. And as always, um, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to give us a like. And check out our new, our new course on Thinkific, which we have one on body language. We have one on persuasion and influence. And we have another course on sales, train, sales training, which involves sales techniques how to sell more, how to be more influential with people, and how to communicate more effectively with people to sell more. Thanks for watching. Fantastic day. See you later. Bye.